starts with breaking news. Good afternoon, everyone. We're following several breaking stories on coronavirus, including a plea for help from restaurants and bars. First, an update on new cases. The Allegheny County Health Department says it's learned of 119 new cases since yesterday at noon. That's out of more than 1,800 tests dating back 18 days, which gives us a positivity rate of 6.6% on those tests. There was also an uptick in hospitalizations with 20 more people admitted. And the health department says it's learned of seven additional deaths between last Thursday and Sunday. And more breaking news, the Pennsylvania Tavern Association is asking the state for help saving restaurants and bars. They went directly to lawmakers in Harrisburg this morning, and Channel 11's Mike Holden breaks down what businesses say they need to survive. These bar and restaurant owners are calling for immediate help and change. They say the COVID-19 pandemic has a strong grip on their industry. They're now calling on lawmakers to do something. Now, the Pennsylvania Licensed Beverage and Tavern Association went before the Pennsylvania Majority Policy Committee. They talked about the coronavirus pandemic and how it has negatively impacted taverns and restaurants across the Commonwealth. A spokesperson said this industry is at a tipping point, and without assistance, many of these spots will disappear altogether in the near future. The Tavern Association laid out an extensive package that will help these businesses survive and recover. They're asking for a number of things, including great Grants that will help pay for losses in PPE, eliminating all license fees and surcharges for liquor related services, and capping third party delivery fees. Restaurants can't operate in this capacity, and something really needs to be done more on a, honestly on a national level because, you know, this is restaurants all around dealing with the same thing. Now the Tavern Association is also asking for a permanent stay on drinks to go throughout the Commonwealth. We're now diving deeper into their further concerns and the response from lawmakers for Channel 11 News starting at 5 o'clock tonight. Reporting from the North Shore, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. And also breaking at noon, Allegheny County's president judge says she believes the courthouse is relatively safe despite mounting coronavirus safety concerns. We told you last week when a judge ordered part of the courthouse to shut down. At a hearing this morning, President Judge Kim Clark said the building is as safe as any other public building, but she agreed that more hearings need to be done by video conferencing to limit how many people are in the building. We're going to have much more from today's hearing tonight on Channel 11 News starting at 5. And new at noon, Pittsburgh police are looking for a violent offender wanted for rape. Michael Cooper is from the Knoxville, Mount Oliver area. Police say he has prior convictions including first-degree murder and several assaults and burglaries. He is considered dangerous. If you see him, they say don't approach him. Instead, call 911. Pittsburgh City Council is debating police reform. There are five bills up for consideration that could result in major changes. One would create a Stop the Violence Fund for Community Violence Prevention. A second bill would transfer a quarter of a million dollars from police salaries into that fund. Another bill bans the use of military equipment or weapons, which includes things like tear gas. The next would require police officers to stop fellow officers from using inappropriate force. And the last bill prohibits chokeholds, which are already a city police practice. Breaking now, Attorney General William Barr is testifying before the House Judiciary Committee. This is a live look right here. House Democrats have been trying to question Barr for a long time about several issues, including his intervention into the prosecutions of two Trump allies. Barr says he got involved on his own and was not swayed by the president. Barr is also being questioned about the recent federal crackdown on protests in Portland and other cities. A protest is also the focus of another hearing now underway. A National Guardsman testified unnecessary force was used in the clearing of the park in front of the White House last month for President Trump. Our Washington, D.C. correspondent Serena Marshall has more on what both sides told lawmakers. Lawmakers are trying to get a clear picture of exactly what happened on the evening of June 1st. Were protesters properly warned to disperse? Was there violence? It seems even for the law enforcement officials there, there was a differing of perspectives. The acting chief of Park Police testifying there was no question of violence directed at officials before and after the clearing operation of the park in front of the White House. Referencing a helmet that sat next to him during the hearing and an officer that is still not recovered explaining in this case i believe the united states park police acted with tremendous restraint 
in the face of severe violence from a large group of bad actors who again caused 50 of my officers to seek medical attention. National Guard Major Adam DeMarco, though, telling lawmakers that the protesters were acting peacefully and unnecessary force was used, that he, standing between the protesters and the audible warning, couldn't hear the warning to disperse. Just last week, the Inspector General for the Justice Department launched an investigation into allegations of use of force in the clearing of Lafayette Park and the deployment of personnel to Portland, Oregon. Reporting from outside Washington, I'm Serena Marshall, Channel 11 News. A homicide investigation in Wilkinsburg led Allegheny County police to Hawkins Village in Rankin, where police spotted a car believed to be involved in a deadly shooting. They later arrested Jordan Cobb on a probation violation. Police say shots were fired from that car at the intersection of Ardmore Boulevard and Marlboro Avenue in Wilkinsburg on Sunday. The 27-year-old victim was taken to the hospital where he died. Pittsburgh police still need your help in finding a missing Pittsburgh teen and her son. This is 17-year-old Jamila McLean and her one-year-old son, Josiah. They were last seen leaving home and going for a walk in the East Hills at around 2 Friday afternoon. Police believe they may still be in the East Hills area or Braddock Hills. Tributes are pouring in for a local college student who was killed in a motorcycle accident. Trey Cunningham was a pitcher for the LaRoche baseball team, and he played two seasons with the Red Hawks. He died Sunday night after his motorcycle crossed the center line of Route 130 in Penn Township and hit a car. LaRoche sent us a statement saying their baseball community lost a friend and a brother. They said Trey had the ability to instantly uplift a person's spirit and his personality was infectious. People are afraid. So, so they're worried about their students, their families, and themselves. There are still so many concerns about sending students and teachers back into the classroom. School superintendents are calling for more concrete recommendations from Governor Tom Wolf. The group says the state's existing reopening guidance for schools is too vague. We've been telling you for weeks about the concerns that teachers and other school workers have about their health and safety. Channel 11's Michelle Newell spoke with the president of the Pittsburgh Teachers Union. People are afraid, so, so they're worried about their students, their families, and themselves. It's a health hazard. The president for the Pittsburgh Federation of Teachers has felt that fear firsthand. Many of the Pittsburgh Public School District teachers she represents are afraid to walk back into school buildings come fall. They are also afraid for their students. They do worry. They worry whether they should go back, whether they should take a leave, whether they should have ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act. Their concerns are the direct result of increasing COVID-19 cases over the past month or so. There are also teachers who have underlying health problems or their family members do, teachers who are pregnant or their spouses. And 25% of teachers within the Pittsburgh Public School District are 50 years old and up. In June, the Pittsburgh Federation of Teachers joined together with one Pennsylvania in the Pittsburgh Public School District to begin putting together a safe back-to-school plan. But the president for the union says the current COVID-19 situation is alarming and has changed over the course of time. It was a terrific plan. I mean, I hope we can move to that hybrid model. I totally endorse the plan. But who knew our numbers were going to turn around so drastically? The upcoming school year won't be 100% clear until a vote happens this Friday. The president for the teachers union says there will be a vote on whether or not the first nine weeks of school will be remote learning. Depending on what happens, there are teachers who are considering not returning to school buildings. They would have to think long and hard about whether they could or should return because of those health conditions. I'm Michelle Newell for Channel 11 News. Right now on our WPXI News app, we have an entire section devoted to topics that parents of school kids have been contacting us about. And if you don't have that app, it is free to download. 
Good afternoon. Taking a look at our Storm Tracker Doppler 11 radar, we just have a few lingering showers out there, primarily in far southeastern Indiana County and there along the border of Maryland and West Virginia. The rest of us are seeing a decrease in cloud cover. It is 77 in Pittsburgh right now, 79 in Greensburg, and 82 in Beaver, so still warm out there. Also, still a bit on the humid side. It's 65 degree dew point for Pittsburgh right now, 70 in Washington and Greensburg. So, this is still a muggy and tropical air mass in place, although that will be changing because we are expecting a cold front to continue to usher in some drier air this afternoon. So it'll feel more pleasant, I think, come late day. Here's a look at our forecast. If you're out walking the dog in the next couple of hours, 2 o'clock temperature in the lower 80s, mid 80s at 5 o'clock as we decrease the clouds for sunshine by later on this evening. Looking pretty nice. A nice night is in store for us and into your Wednesday morning. But some of you could see a stray shower or a thunderstorm on Wednesday. I'll let you know who, and we'll take a look at the temperature forecast as well, coming up. All right, thanks, Danielle. It took a little longer than expected thanks to a rain delay and extra innings, but the Pirates finished their home opener early this morning. Unfortunately, it was not a winning effort. The Buckos fell to the Milwaukee Brewers 6-5 to five in 11 innings. The game started just after 7 last night, but was put on hold by the line of storms that rolled through. The Pirates get another chance to uh, beat the Brewers. That's tonight. The Phillies and Yankees canceled their game last night at Philadelphia, so Major League Baseball can conduct additional COVID-19 testing. The Phillies wrapped up a home series with Miami over the weekend, and now as many as 15 players for the Marlins have come down with the virus. The Marlins' home opener against the Orioles was also canceled. The state health department sent us a statement saying they are committed to protecting the health and well-being of Pennsylvanians. They went on to say that they have been in communication with both the Phillies and Pirates regarding the team's COVID-19 health and safety plans. The Steelers report to training camp today. The team is not allowed to travel for camp, so workouts will be at Heinz Field and not St. Vincent College. There will be no practice for at least the first few days. This week is going to focus on COVID-19 testing and physicals. Players and coaches will be tested every day. Practice with pads is expected to start in mid-August. There will be no preseason games. The Penguins are in the bubble up in Toronto, and Sidney Crosby is back on the ice. This video posted by the Pens on Twitter. The Pens have an exhibition game with the Flyers this afternoon. They face off for Game 1 of the Stanley Cup playoffs against Montreal Saturday, and head coach Mike Sullivan says he believes his team is ready to go. And high school sports still on track to start next month. It's very difficult because it's contact sport. Why it may be up to the players themselves to stay healthy. We did as much as we could to, in order to stay open and survive. Her restaurant was cited for not following COVID-19 guidelines. Why, she says, the Allegheny County response team got it wrong. You're streaming WPXI now, your source for original local shows. Get the inside scoop on all the hot events, entertainment, and celebrities in and around Pittsburgh every week. Stream Access Pittsburgh on demand anytime on WPXI now.
Channel 11 covers weather everywhere you live. And we have the experience to get it right. We know the unique weather patterns across our neighborhoods. It's why it can be raining in Beaver County. While it's dry in Westmoreland County. Weather coverage you can count on. Watch Channel 11 News at 6. Followed by NBC Nightly News at 6.30. He dedicated his life to helping kids stay away from gun violence, and now there's a permanent memorial to honor Sheldon Stoudmire. This mosaic was unveiled outside a Northside homeless shelter. It marks the spot where Stoudmire was shot and killed. He co-founded the Pittsburgh chapter of Mad Dads with James to help at-risk kids and put a stop to gun violence. He also volunteered at a, as a boxing instructor and worked as an advocate for homeless men. Americans tend to define themselves through their work, their job. Sheldon defined himself through his works, his works helping and guiding others. The mural was painted by a local artist and funded by grant money. Gerald Adams faces charges for killing Stoudemire. His trial is set to begin in November. The Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank has kicked off a new initiative. The goal of food justice is social justice is to create awareness. The food bank says social inequality is one of the root causes of food insecurity. Over the next three weeks, the food bank is collaborating with area organizations to showcase their mission to achieve social justice. In the 10 years we've had this business, we've never had an issue. Her restaurant was cited by Allegheny County's COVID field response team, but she says she's following all the guidelines. The team goes from bar to restaurant checking for coronavirus compliance. Channel 11's Gabriela DeLuca talked to that owner who says she's just trying to survive. Here at Fudge Farm, you can see the tables themselves aren't exactly six feet apart because they're bolted into the ground. However, the owners say that the seats are socially distanced from each other, and that should be enough. We did as much as we could to, in order to stay open and survive. Fudge Farm owner Molly Rainey put social distancing signs on her floor, a plexiglass barrier at the cash register, and even more glass around her food display. But she still got an unsatisfactory mark when the county's COVID response team inspected her restaurant. We've always been in compliance with the health department. We've never, in the 10 years we've had this business, we've never had an issue. The reason for the X, her tables are bolted into the ground and are closer than six feet from each other. Each chair, though, is far enough apart. They have to be bolted in order to stay safe stable so that's why they are so that's why we have everything seated so you can't you have to be six part, six feet away every other table is closed but according to state regulations if a restaurant is self-seating you have to clearly make the six feet distance visible to customers by using something like signs or roping off chairs help us give us suggestions if you're going to cite us for something say hey maybe you could do it this way or this this is wrong do it this way channel 11 reached out to the health department today who said in part this is a process to help educate and inform food establishments of the requirements under the current health orders what we heard from food businesses is that they wanted a process that would show the public which ones were following the rules and doing things correctly but now rainy's worried the unsatisfactory mark could cost her customers i know businesses after businesses that are just closing um you know Again, we're a small business. It's my husband and I. We built this from nothing. To lose it is more than just a financial disaster. It's this is our passion. This is our dream. A spokesperson from the health department said they are going out to restaurants based on complaints that are made to the department. And then they are also stopping by nearby facilities in the area. Reporting from the South Side, Gabriela DeLuca, Channel 11 News. Regal Cinemas is going to open some theaters on August 21st. There's a Regal Theater in Washington and one in Butler. The chain hasn't said which ones they're going to reopen yet. They will be following local guidelines for capacity. The company also says that it will sanitize every theater and every seat after each movie. A floating cinema night in Pittsburgh could be in jeopardy. The promoter has yet to apply for the required permits. This is a look at the cinema in Paris last week. It's advertised as a way for people to safely watch movies from boats on the river. The Pittsburgh stop is set for September 16th through the 20th.
your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Good afternoon. Uh, taking a look at our visible satellite, we have those puffy clouds in the sky, and we're going to continue to see those for a little bit longer as we decrease a lot of the cloud cover we had out there earlier. It's fairly cloudy this morning with a few lingering showers, but we're noticing a decrease in cloud cover as dry air works its way in. Temperature-wise, though, it's still going to be a very warm day. Forecast size 85, winds a little bit breezy from time to time. Out of the west-northwest at 5 to 15 miles per hour. As I mentioned earlier, the humidity will steadily lower throughout the day. Hey, we had 90s yesterday, by the way, 92 degrees, marking the 13th time we have had the 90s this year. The average is 7. Warmest so far was 94. We reached 92 yesterday, so we still have yet to break that barrier, but it's certainly been a hot July for us. I've updated our July to date, our mean average temperature at Pittsburgh International, 77.4 degrees. So if the month ended today, it would be the warmest July to July, really, on record. You can see 2012 was 77.2 degrees. When you take a look at every single month out of the year, July 2020 is actually ranking the second warmest on record at Pittsburgh International. First is August 1995 with 77.7 .7 degrees. So I'm going to continue to update these numbers. We still have a couple of more days left in the month of July, so we'll see where we finish. Tonight, low temperature, pretty comfortable, down to 64 degrees under a mostly clear sky. We're going to have calm winds overall. Pretty nice evening and nice night to get outside. Something else happening tonight is uh, two different meteor showers. So as the sky is clear, hopefully we'll get a nice view of this anytime after midnight in through dawn. That's when the peak hours will be for looking at the delta and alpha meteor showers. About 20 to 25 meteors per hour are possible. Of course, you're going to want to get away from light pollution. That can really hinder it and uh, hinder the viewing. So you can see this with the naked eye. Just get outside away from those lights and let your eyes adjust to the darkness. 86 for the daytime high tomorrow. Mostly sunny. Winds west southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Couple of you will have a chance for a passing shower or a thunderstorm. Right now it looks like in areas across I-80 and points to the north favoring a chance for an afternoon or evening shower or thunderstorm. That threat would continue into the nighttime hours as well. A couple of models are showing this, so I'm going to continue to keep an eye on Pittsburgh and the rest of the area, but for now, kind of along the northern tier of our northern counties and up along I-80 with that threat. Some of those could be on the stronger side as well, so Severe Weather Team 11 will be tracking that for you. As we head into the rest of the week, Thursday, a few thunderstorms with a weather disturbance passing through. Friday, Saturday, look dry for your outdoor plans, and Sunday, we're going to bring back some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Still to come in the next half hour, I've got a look at potential tropical cyclone that is actually forming in the Atlantic right now. So I'm going to bring you the latest as it could affect the U.S. Packages from China are showing up at homes across the state unsolicited. The warning about what's inside. But first, how dogs could be a key factor in sniffing out COVID-19. going on your vacation, buddy. It's the summer of me, your TV vacation destination. You going on vacation, Sergeant? Any day away from you, pile, I consider a vacation. The perfect getaway is right at home. What am I going to do this summer? With me, TV. As always, featuring some of the greatest TV shows ever made. Yes, sir, I'm going to lay around home and just take it easy. You can find me, TV on Comcast 190, 207, or 1169, and on these and other providers.
Nobody can read between the lines like Judge Judy. Researchers hope dogs will be the next tool in the fight against coronavirus. The virus doesn't have a smell, but the infection generates a certain type of sweat that dogs can detect. The dogs need to learn that smell. Chilean police hope to have four dogs ready to start patrolling in September. Researchers in London are also training dogs to detect coronavirus infections. While dogs can catch coronavirus, there is no evidence yet to suggest they can spread the disease. New rankings are out for U.S. air carriers' response to coronavirus. And according to the points guys, Delta ranked number one for the best response to the pandemic. Its cleaning procedures, safety protocols, and ticket loyalty flexibility were big factors. Alaska, Alaska JetBlue, American, and Southwest rounded out the top five. Disinfecting wipes are still hard to come by. Brands like Clorox and 7th Generation use the fabric polyester spun lace to make the wipes, but that's also used to make PPE, like masks and medical gowns. So the production of wipes may take longer to return to normal. Uncertainty still hangs over high school football this fall. The sacrifices local coaches say players have to make to get back on the field. And then all of a sudden the virus comes, which no one could have predicted uh, and no one was prepared to handle. Local schools are preparing to welcome students back. How the state is making sure they have the supplies they need. Sing along with the Flintstones and Happy Days. Weeknights at 6 and 6.30 on MeTV. Channel 11 News brings you the latest details. It's new statewide restrictions on restaurant capacity. We brought you the governor's remarks live on the air. Big changes coming within the next few hours. Watch Channel 11 News at 5 and 6 p.m. What's new? What's now? And what's next? Every morning on Channel 11 Morning News. 
Plexiglass barriers and masks are just some of the extra expenses that school districts will have this year to meet safety guidelines. And they're getting help to pay for it. In 2018, the state started setting aside millions of dollars for school security. Channel 11's Aaron Martin found out how that money is helping schools adapt. State legislators set aside millions of dollars every year to school districts to make sure unwanted people stay out. But because of the coronavirus pandemic, that money is now being used to help students get back in. And it's work that continues as we get closer to the start of the school year. Just kind of lifts our spirits. And we haven't seen them in so long, so we're really excited for them to come back. There's cautious optimism at Linton Middle School in Penn Hills that students will return in some form this fall. But what that will look like remains unclear. A complete return for students and staff five days a week. I've actually ruled that out at this point. Um, there's no way that I could see recommending that to our board. That just wouldn't be safe and wouldn't be responsible. Penn Hill Superintendent Nancy Hines sees two realistic possibilities. A hybrid approach where students have two days of in-person instruction or all virtual. Either option will require an influx of masks and cleaning supplies along with more technology. I think most districts have been proactive. You know, as early as February, March started stockpiling. We, we have a lot of masks here on site. Now the district is getting help paying for it. Two years ago, state legislators started providing millions of dollars annually to help school districts statewide improve security. That combined with money from the CARES Act means public districts will receive an average of $160,000 this school year. But instead of buying metal detectors and security cameras, that money is now being used to help students learn during the pandemic. And it can be used for almost anything that's either directly or indirectly related to COVID. Penn Hills will use a portion of its money to make sure students are prepared at home and in the classroom. We do have assigned a lot of that to the purchase of Chromebooks or, or like um, equipment so that we'll have a one-to-one -one device. State Senator Jim Brewster is happy to see the money is coming at the right time to help school districts statewide. While safety is still a top priority, he expects the coronavirus will have a long-term impact on how that money is used going forward. If another virus was show up five years from now, we're going to know how to handle it. It's going to be part of the baseline security package. So we didn't want to have it happen this way, uh, but certainly it'll give us the experience to say, let's think about what we would do if this would happen again. Aaron Martin, Channel 11 News. Penn Hill's final decision on how students will return to the classroom is still a couple of weeks away. The superintendent says any decision could change in a matter of hours simply based on how the coronavirus spreads. Penn State says it bought one and a half million face masks for the fall semester, and that is on top of the 500,000 that they already had on hand. They also have 14,000 face shields and 8,000 clear masks. The university is holding an online town hall to discuss fall plans. That's happening on Thursday. We're getting a better idea about who is wearing a mask in the United States. According to a new survey by NBC News and SurveyMonkey, 86% of Democrats say they wear a protective mask every time they leave home and may be in contact with others. 48% of Republicans wear it. The survey also found older Americans wear a mask more than younger generations. And non-white adults are more likely to wear a mask than white adults. Family-owned businesses need a funding boost before it's too late. Our Ryan Houston talked with several businesses that say time is not on their side. More and more clothes for business signs are going up in southwestern PA. Slice on Broadway at PNC Park is shutting down. According to its Facebook page, this location is closing because less people are working and eating on the North Shore and no fans are being allowed at the baseball games. The pandemic has the owners of Neville Roller Drone going in circles, so to speak. We've laid off our entire staff at this point with no revenue coming in and the payroll protection plan money's completely dried up, completely used up as they should have been. Uh, we can't pay anyone. We have canceled upgrade projects. We've laid staff off. Uh, we're just kind of in the old school hunkering down. Jim and Sophie Park says this rink has been here since 1948, and they're in week 15 of being shut down. The couple Astro says Jen, if it wasn't for their ability to sell skates, making ends meet there. would be even harder. Yeah, and Governor this. Wolf's order allowing yeah. 25 people inside an establishment is not helping. Considering what it takes to keep ah, our facility okay. open, it would not. We would actually take a loss financially to do that. There's 
That's not the only business having issues all because of COVID-19. The Ruby's Cleaners here in East Liberty is closed. So we had to go all the way to Squirrel Hill to talk to the owner. I'm not be able to continue. This is what I'm decided to shut down the store. Omar al Khafaji opened both Ruby's Cleaners in Squirrel Hill and East Liberty in 2013. He says after COVID-19 hit, people aren't working, and that means they don't need dry cleaning. After we reopen in May, nobody coming. Sometimes zero, zero profit, no sales. All day? All day. Ryan Houston, Channel 11 News. Seems pretty bleak, but business owners we spoke with say they've overcome other obstacles and they hope to do the same with COVID-19. Back with a check of the temperatures right now. It's 79 still in Greensburg, 81 in Washington, and 77 in Pittsburgh. This evening, if you're grilling out, it's going to be fantastic weather. We should clear out the clouds and have plenty of sunshine as the sun begins to go down. And once we get closer toward 9 o'clock, you can see the temperatures generally in the mid-80s to low-80s. So really nice evening is in store. I wanted to show you that update, I promised, and this is the latest that we have on potential tropical cyclone 9. And this is winds of 40 miles per hour as it moves toward the west at 23 miles per hour. And I'm showing you this because it does look to stay a tropical storm once it develops into one. And uh, it will be fighting some wind shear, but we're going to continue to track this because long range data and the National Hurricane Center official track, which is what you're looking at here, takes it very very close to Florida, so something to watch as we head into early August, really, because, of course, we are rounding out the month of July. We'll have more on your forecast as we head into the day on Wednesday coming up. Thanks, Danielle. Fitness trackers keeping an eye on your health, the most important measurement, and how research on, how, on it could signal a medical issue like coronavirus. Hmm. And packages from China are showing up at homes unsolicited. The warning about what is inside. Channel 11 News at 5 and 6 p.m. brings you the latest details on the coronavirus. 331 new coronavirus cases. While hospitalizations are up, experts say the hospitals in this region have not been overwhelmed. So we brought you the governor's remarks live on the air this afternoon. We have got to act now. Big changes coming within the next few hours. This really affects bars and restaurants, especially the ones that are already struggling. Watch Channel 11 News every day at 5 and 6 p.m. Channel 11 News, 11 at 11. 11 minutes of news and weather before the first commercial. A warning from the state. Officials say people are getting unsolicited packages containing seeds from China. The State Department of Agriculture is warning people not to open the packages or plant the seeds. 
They aren't sure yet what those seeds are. They say the seeds could be an invasive species, which could be detrimental to native plants, insects, and crops, and cause damage to the local environment. When it comes to COVID-19, the most important measurement your fitness tracker takes throughout the day is your heart rate. Most can identify when your heart rate fluctuates from its baseline and unexplained changes could signal a variety of health issues, including infection, while more advanced watch watches might be able to monitor breathing. So if you have an infection, uh, particularly a respiratory infection, you can see that breathing rate go up. So sometimes if you're really falling outside of your norms, maybe that's a useful data point to look at and to look a little closer at whether you're having any other signs or symptoms of uh, a COVID-19 infection. Now that does not mean that your smartwatch can detect COVID, but there is research being done on how it might be able to do that in the future. For now though, their most important role in this pandemic is to keep you moving. It's very difficult because it's contact sport. High school sports are still on track to start next month. Why it may be up to the players themselves to stay healthy. We're in for a warm afternoon as we get rid of some of these clouds out there. I'm tracking who could see a stray shower or storm on Wednesday. And we'll also talk about some comfortable weather that's moving into the forecast. On Channel 11 Morning News, we tell you what's new, what's happening now, and what's next. New stories with new details. Breaking stories, updated all morning. And developing stories to prepare you for what's next on Channel 11 Morning News. way of disinfecting could be a game changer for dentists and patients. It will be an instant kill for COVID. A local dentist explains how the new technology will keep their offices safe. See how it works Wednesday on Channel 11 News at 5. Watch David Johnson and Peggy Finnegan on Channel 11 News at 5. We've been working since March, February. And I mean, if, that, if that's taken away, I mean, all that hard work was for nothing. Hundreds of high school football players are waiting to find out what this season will look like. The Pennsylvania Interscholastic Athletic Association says it's moving forward with fall sports. But what games and practices will look like is still unknown. Channel 11's Jillian Hartman talked to players and coaches about the waiting game. Well, we are a month away from high school football kicking off here at North Allegheny. The Tigers have a home game scheduled at the end of August. But what will football games look like for coaches, players, and fans? 
Well, if it's status quo, that's great. Then it's a full season and everything's going on. But we know that there's a chance that that may not happen. NA's head football coach tells me his team wants to play more than anything, but the season is still up in the air. It's very difficult because it's contact sport and there's going to be collisions and proximity and all that stuff. Today, we stopped by Pine Richland Summer Workouts, where the team is complying with the same safety protocols. For seniors like John Swisher, this season is his last chance to try to move on to the next level. I feel like this could be an opportunity for me to get a scholarship or just get a position on a football team in college. Players tell me with the guidelines already in place, they feel safe to play. We've been working since March, February, and I mean, if, that, if that's taken away, I mean, all that hard work was for nothing. Another big question is, will fans be allowed in the stands? Alternatives may include live streaming the games and limiting ticket sales. Bigger stadiums like North Allegheny can spread out a lot of people. As for cheerleaders and band members, coaches say no final decisions have been made yet. Coaches also tell me there is some talk of possibly a delayed or shortened season or having a travel squad for away games to limit players. However, most of what they're hearing is positive and promising that kids can safely play high school football this fall. They just want to be out here. They want to be out here playing the sport they love. and. We keep preaching them, you do it right, and then we should be able to be out there in the fall. We reached out to the PIAA for an update. As of now, the PIAA is currently moving forward with fall sports. They sent us a statement saying in part, August 10th will be the start of heat acclimatization for football, and August 17th will be the start of the remainder of fall sports. Now, the PIAA is holding a board meeting this Wednesday. Coaches tell me some big decisions are expected to be made, and they may release updated mandates for fall sports. However, the health department Department at the state or county level could step in and make the ultimate decision on what happens with fall sports. Reporting at North Allegheny, I'm Jillian Hartman, Channel 11 News. And there could be changes to the high school football championships. A report out this morning says there's a chance the Whitfield will not hold the games at Heinz Field. The league has reserved the stadium but says things may change depending on the pandemic. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. A live look outside and we have some sun, some clouds, and a temperature still at 77. Still have a bit, a bit of a heat index, that is. 79 winds west-northwest at 9 miles per hour. That's because our dew points are still up a little bit. Temperature-wise, we're at 77 in Indiana. 82 out in Beaver. It's a warm 81 for you in Washington. In Washington, it's 68 degree dew point for us. So definitely still a humid day and afternoon 70 the dew point in Greensburg so that's some tropical air that is still hanging on really for points south of Pittsburgh you can see some drier air working its way into Beaver remember anything less than a 60 degree dew point it starts to feel more comfortable out there so I am expecting those dew points to gradually come down throughout the day and evening making for a comfortable nighttime and overnight period so that's what we're showing here on our humidity forecast and then as we head into Wednesday dew point numbers upper 50s to low 60s so really kind of depending on your location could feel a bit muggy in spots, but it shouldn't be as bad as what we have been dealing with as of late. And then Thursday and Friday, somewhat on the muggy side, but right now the long range data is not showing anything steamy out there like we were dealing with yesterday and early today. Tonight, as I mentioned, really comfortable night for us as we clear out the clouds. It'll be mostly clear tonight, calm winds. The low temperature will fall down to 64 degrees, unlike the 70 degree low temperatures we've had out there lately. 61 for you in Butler tonight, a cooler night in Indiana at 61. Greensburg, you're going to fall to about 62. And Uniontown, near 63 degrees, a product of the drier air in place. Our morning planner tomorrow, 65 at 6 o'clock, 65 at 7. We'll have that clear sky with full sunshine as you head out the door tomorrow morning. Tomorrow afternoon, the temperatures are still going to be heating up. Another very warm afternoon in store and above average. High temperature near 86, mostly sunny with west southwest winds right around 5 to 10 miles per hour. You can see the text there. We will have a stray shower or a thunderstorm possibility. Right now, the model data has been pretty confined up along the I-80 corridor and points to the north, but we'll continue to watch it and let you know if anything develops here around the Pittsburgh area in the overnight data that comes out and really the data in the next couple of hours because we get frequent updates. So we'll continue to let you know about that. 88 for the high tomorrow in Greensburg. 
87 in Uniontown, 86 in Butler, so we're all looking pretty toasty out there. Five-day forecast, your weekend always in view. 83 on Thursday. We do have an upper air disturbance coming in from the west, so that should lead to some showers and storms and a little more coverage across the area. I think a lot of us will be staying dry on Wednesday the way it looks right now. Friday is dry and partly sunny. 83, the overnight lows throughout the week in the low to middle 60s. If you have any outdoor plans this weekend, Saturday looks good. Mostly sunny at 85, but we have a pretty big low pressure system coming in for the latter half of the weekend, so we are expected to see some showers and storms. So that's when we're going to be bringing out our umbrellas again. All right, thank you. Now here's local steals and deals, Lisa Robertson. Lisa Robertson here with Local Steals and Deals, bringing you something you are absolutely going to love because this is going to be an at-home alternative to going somewhere and getting a professional beauty treatment in a lot of cases. This is actually a company called Wrinkles Schminkles. Now, I agree, it's a really funny sounding name, but it's a really high-end beauty brand and they created these 100% medical grade silicone patches that are so easy for beauty treatment. Are you ready for this? Here's what you do. You put it on, you go to sleep. Yeah, that's it. You put it on, you go to sleep, and it infuses your skin with all these amazing active ingredients. And not only is it really high end as far as the materials and the active ingredients, but they give you so many ways to treat. So they have one for your forehead, one for your eyes, one for your mouth, one for your neck. That one is reformulated. One for your chest and one for your hands. What gives away your age? Your hands. We take such good care of our face and then our hands are going, what? Now you have one for your hands. Any of these options are 30% off, and that is an amazing way to try them and such a great way to do self-care because none of us have time to make an appointment for the salon anyway, right? Oh, one of the most important things is these are reusable. The most important thing is cleaning them. These come with the cleanser that is going to be super easy, and it's going to make sure that you can reuse them again and again and again. So you just choose where or treat all the places at once, forehead, eyes, mouth, neck, chest, hands 100 percent medical grade silicone patches that are the easiest beauty treatment ever you put it on you go to sleep oh my gosh even i can do that 30 percent off on localsteals.com and the best alternative you've ever had to actually making an appointment driving your car rearranging your life stay at home put it on go to sleep wake up look amazing on channel 11 morning news we bring you what's new what's happening now and what's next. That means our newsroom is always searching for new details and new stories. It also means breaking. If it's happening now, I'm on it, bringing you live updates from the breaking news desk. Our crews know the mission, too. We should get this on air now. Brand new confirmed information preparing you for what happens next. How will news stories, weather, and traffic affect your day? What's new, what's now, and what's next every morning on Channel 11 Morning News.
severe weather coverage where you live. On Channel 11 News. Volunteer fire departments are struggling through this pandemic. They've had to cancel several fundraisers, and that's their main source of revenue. We got a look at Hempfield's plan to survive. Supervisors want to create a nonprofit. According to the TRIB, it would allow them to apply for funding through different federal and state agencies. Last year, Hempfield consolidated its 12 fire stations into one department. If you need to renew your driver's license, you have some more time. Expiration dates for a driver's license, ID card, and learner's permit that were set to expire have now been accepted through August 31st. PennDOT also says there are a lot of services offered online, and you may not have to go to the DMV. And you can get a new card with your current picture. PennDOT is asking you to weigh in on how to make our roads safer. The agency just launched its annual highway safety survey. It asks questions about your habits when it comes to wearing a seatbelt, driving under the influence, and speeding. You could take the survey online. A baseball trading card of Dr. Anthony Fauci throwing the first pitch on opening day of Major League Baseball has made history now. That card was only available for 24 hours, and in that time, Top sold more than 51,000 of them. That makes it the best selling card in Top's now history. Fauci wore a Nationals jersey, hat, and face mask as he threw out the first pitch at the Nationals game last week. Not a great pitch, but as our <laughs> colleague David Johnson said, he has other talent. Balance, right? There you go, exactly. Well, that's all for Channel 11 News. Yep, at noon. Our next newscast comes up tonight at 5. You can get breaking news updates anytime on our streaming apps. Just search WPXI at Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.